going to give you an update on the on trunk injection, although many of you have heard um, some of what I'm talking about um, in previous presentations. So HLB is a vascular or systemic disease. That means the, the, the pathogen associated with HLB is phloem limited and it inhabits all parts of the tree, including the fruit, the leaves, the twigs, down to the stem and even into the roots. This makes it so exceptionally difficult to treat, especially when we apply foliar therapies that are not very effective. One way to get things or therapies into the to systemic, deliver them systemically is through trunk injection. With trunk injection, we directly de deliver, ther deliver therapies into the xylem or the wood of a trunk. And we're making use of transpiration because things that are in the xylem can move with the transpiration stream and disperse throughout the whole tree. If given that the therapy that we inject is properly formulated, the material can then also move into the phloem on its way up or maybe on its way down. And um, this is where we need to get it because this is where our pathogen resides. Between 2020 and 2022, we conducted a lot of field studies. Um, we used for, uh, for all our studies, we used um, spring loaded syringes or co also called chemjets. And we usually injected on two opposite sides of the tree um, um, using 20 milliliter on each side. We injected into the sign mostly, and we used an uh, um, active ingredient of 0.79 grams per tree. And the uh, formulation that we, we used at the time is um, Arbor OTC, which uh, is a labeled uh, injectable formulation, but it's um, a different formulation than what is now on the label. It was in fact labeled for citrus, but not for bearing citrus. Um, in all these field studies, we um, noticed that um, um, oxytetracycline, when delivered by injection, was very effective. We um, observed a reduced food drop, which in turn lead, uh, led to an increase in yield. We had increases of 30% at least or more. We also observed a significant improvement in food quality, not only in terms of external quality, um, in that the fruit were uh, more orange and larger. They also had an improved bricks. And we also, especially when we injected young trees, we saw a visible improvement in tree health. Um, now we have a label, or we have two labels. Um, one is, um, was um, 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 put forth in last year in October and one um, this year in January. Both have the same active ingredient, which is 95% oxytetracycline hydrochloride, and the label instructions are also um, identical. Um, you're probably familiar with the label. The label rate or the dose of oxytetracycline um, is dependent on the trunk diameter. Uh, most of the trees that um, most of you are probably injecting are in the range of four to six inches in trunk diameter, which would mean you have to deliver a volume of 100 milliliter. And the label rate is um, either uh, 5,500 ppm, which is 0.55 grams active ingredient per tree, or 11,000 um, ppm, which is 1.1 gram um, per tree. And this is kind of the same range that we have been using in our um, previous studies. On the label, it, uh, it says that you can inject non-bearing trees um, at very low concentrations, and you can do it to, um, up to twice a year. When you do this, I urge you to be careful because um, this may cause more harm than benefit. So um, today I want to talk a little bit about our ongoing research. I don't have much time, but um, I'll talk predominantly about one study that we are conducting at the East Coast. Um, um, this trial is uh, Valencia on sour orange, planted in 2013, and the average trunk diameter that is above the craft union is uh, four and a half inches on average. In this study, we compared which, what I call our methodology um, with the currently labeled methodology um, using the flex inject injectors and the um, labeled um, formulation. And we um, injected all the trees in June. We did our second injections this year. And um, the oxytetracycline doses we tried was the 0.55 gram or the 1.1 gram, uh, so the high and the low dose. So here are the results for the yield. Um, on the left, um, the ChemJet methodology, and on the right, the FlexInject methodology. The pink boxes here are our untreated control. 
And you can see the other boxes indicate our um, 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 injected treatments. And you can see that um, in both, um, with both methodologies, we saw an increase in yield of up to 70%. And uh, with the flex inject method, it was a little bit better um, for the higher dose, uh, whereas with our methodology, um, there was no statistically significant difference um, in yield. And we look at the pound solids, and that's what we see in all our trials. The pound solids are um, always significantly improved. Here again, you see the uh, negative control. And um, regardless of the methodology, we saw an improvement in pound solids of 10 to 18%. And um, although there is a trend for the higher dose to um, have a higher pound solids, um, it was not statistically um, uh, different between low and high dose. Uh, the label recommends to inject into the rootstock, um, and however, this may not always be practical or even possible, so then we may need to inject into the scion. So we have initiated um, several field um, trials, in fact, we have three field trials that are uh, CODF rootstock trials, so fairly large size trials, in which we compare rootstock injection versus scion injection, and we started this um, study this year. And um, so some of the data we already collected uh, in regards to the uptake rate. Um, and this, you see the brown boxes are the rootstock, the green boxes are the scion injection, and we have three different rootstocks. And those black dots are our data points, and you can see they're all over the place. Sometimes they take it up within 10 minutes, sometimes it takes three hours. So what you see here, there was no significant difference whether we inject into the rootstock or the scion. What is most uh, more important is the, the time of the day that we inject. Is it early morning, late afternoon, or um, the, the environmental conditions? Is this cloudy? The, the sunny conditions are more conducive to uptake, um, and the mid to late morning are probably also better. So environmental conditions are greatly affecting your uptake rate, not so much rootstock or scion and also whether the tree is well watered um, before you do the injections. Um, some other little studies that we have conducted are um, uh, dye injections. So we inject the dye into the tree just to visualize the potential uptake, uh, the path that what we inject into the tree is taking. And um, here in this photo, this was taken uh, two to three hours after we injected an um, acid fusion into the tree uh, with a flex inject um, injector. And you can see some of the leaves take up a lot of dye. Others don't take up anything. And then some you have this um, speckled appearance. Um, I don't know the picture, the colors are not very good on the main screen, or hopefully you can see it. So what this shows is that it's not necessarily a homogeneous distribution within um, the canopy. We also injected um, a tree um, really high up, um, right on, on the scion trunk, right underneath a main scaffold branch. And what we noticed here is that when you do that, we need to know, um, um, keep that in mind that when you inject right underneath a scaffold branch, whatever you inject goes mainly into that side of the canopy that is supported by the branch. So you will only see leaves um, um, colored on this side, whereas the other side, in this case, did not receive any dye. So th these results will uh, be an argument for injecting into the rootstock not because it is the rootstock, but simply because it's lower on the trunk. The lower you, on the trunk you inject, the more time the oxytetracycline has to disperse evenly until it goes up into the canopy. So what do you do when you have a tree like this? Some of our trees um, that we started to inject this year are uh, older trees, and then we have this little trunk to work with. So what do we do? The best thing that I can advise is to try to inject somewhere in the middle, right in line with the crotch of the branches, so that you have the best chance of um, it being distributed more evenly. Or if you have a really big tree that you want to um, rescue, you may want to split up your injection into three portions into the main branches. So I have received um, several phone calls from growers regarding the formulation storage. And um, so we did a little experiment and where we um, prepared the formulation. I have them labeled here as OTC1, OTC2. These are both the labeled formulations. You can see on day one, when we freshly mix it, you probably have seen it by now. We have the nice yellow clear color. 
on day two already, and that is in storage inside the lab where it's relatively cool. The, uh, the prepared formulation turns um, orange, it is still clear. And on day five, it, it's turning brown, brownish and um, starts to become a little bit cloudy. What happens when we store it outside? So we filled the injectors and put it underneath the tree. And, even, and already on day two, does the formulation turn um, brown and cloudy? I can't tell you if it's still effective or not, but um, if you listen to uh, Mr. Danzler this morning, um, they're already looking into that. Um, so my advice is, um, that's what we are doing at least, mix it um, and then inject it as soon as possible. So don't store it for days if you can prevent it. So, uh, trunk injection works, but we should never forget that it causes injury to the tree. In um, the oxytetracycline uh, delays the wound closure and also increases the wound size. You can see here photos in um, comparison with water on the left and oxytetracycline um, um, on the right. And these are some extreme samples and the spark splitting and the wound um, it stays open longer for up to six months uh, before it closes and some colors formation. We saw that mainly in our younger trees that maybe they had a two and a half to three inch uh, trunk diameter. Um, so I was happy to see that our recent experiments where we had um, uh, injected older trees, more mature trees, the external injury was really limited and most of the times our injection holes looked really good, um, just like you see here on the picture. So um, nothing um, visually to worry about. However, um, no matter how it looks on the outside, also remember that the inside may not look all too pretty. We see this um, um, dark discoloration in the trunk. Again, this is a younger tree, so it probably looks a little bit worse. We have in our IFAS booth, we have a tree trunk, so you can look how it looks in, in, in reality. So we have this um, um, dark discoloration, or we call it wound compartmentalization, and um, the new growth is healthy, but um, you can see that you don't want to inject your trees more than you need to, and that is um, like once a year. So take home messages, um, we have uh, all our replicated field studies demonstrate consistently positive results for trunk injections. Um, if done properly, we see improved yield, we see improved food quality, but the responses vary based on tree age, tree physiological, um, the tree physiological state, the disease status, time of year and, and other environmental or other factors. And um, again, just Keep in mind that trunk injection is no replacement for solid management or other best management practices. So you need to continue to, to do a good job in managing new trees. And I want to thank my awesome team at SWIFREC. They have become experts at trunk injection and seems they're out in the field um, most of these days. And um, if you have time, stop by at the UFI first booth. You can talk to some of them. And uh, lastly, I want to thank the funding agencies, USDA, NIFA, and CRDF, who provided the resources for all these studies, and of course, the CROA collaborators. Thank you. Thank you.